Looking for a stress-free summer? HelloFresh sends you foolproof step-by-step -step recipes and fresh, pre-portioned ingredients to make mealtime a summer breeze. Get 16 free meals plus three free gifts with code AWFUL16. HelloFresh.com slash AWFUL16. I'm a pug of bacon corn. And so she's the one who sort of comes on to him, right? Mm -hmm. And she's like, don't you want to do this? And he's like, well, yeah, but spike pit. And like points to a <laughs> spike pit is, under the tree. What? What is happening? Okay, Kara. <laughs> See, this is a typical woman. Typical woman. Oh, the minute you want to do it, we just have to ignore the fact that we're standing next to an aforementioned, unmentioned <laughs> spike <laughs> pit. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God awful movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by the Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? Fantastic, Heath. You're doing great. We're Are you recording doing fucking this on great. Is it awesome? Friday. <laughs> <laughs> not to not to switch roles, but we're recording this on Friday, June twenty fourth at two o four p.m. And I am in the mood to make jokes. Two o four Gilead time. Great. But wait, Heath, Heath. Yeah. Can you think of anyone who might be more in the mood to make jokes than <laughs> yeah. you and I you right know what? now? I'd like to welcome veteran maskist and skin book enthusiast Kara Santa Maria. Kara, <laughs> welcome back. Oh, and Roe v. Wade enthusiast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Forgot about that. I. This is a great time to be making the jokes. <laughs> Wacky shark movie coming up. Kara, tell us, <laughs> what are we going to be breaking down today? Okay, so we watched a movie titled Noah's Shark. Get it? Noah's Shark. Mm -hmm. Shark. Like our it's the story of, so this is what they wrote in the script, guys. They write, it's the story of blank and I left it blank because I don't know what the I fuck I this movie you, is. I think you know the correct it's, answer. It's the story of blank. It's a yeah. fucking great summary. Of this that's movie. what it's the story of. I think that might have been the script for this movie. <laughs> it's, it's the story of blank. This is probably, I mean, I appreciate this is the shortest film that I have been subjected to. So I appreciate that. But at the same time, it was the most confusing for me. Yeah. Yeah, there are several moments in this film where it's like, hey, hey, fuck you. <laughs> Just in case you were following along. <laughs> I have no idea what happened. Maybe y'all can explain it to me. Eli, before we get to that, tell us how bad was this movie? Well, if you love corny, bad sci-fi shark movies with puns in their titles. I do. Got you. This is not that. This yeah. is not that. No, this not. is mostly talking about Bible lore that the movie made up <laughs> and shots of the manager of a local hot topic. Got you. <laughs> that is 100% what happened in the casting. <laughs> All right. Is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Oh, oh, oh. Best worst marine biology. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> because multiple times throughout this film, and we will point them out. There is a shark. I think this is the antagonist of the movie. I'm not sure, though. <laughs> I think it's the shark clear. is the antagonist. <laughs> it's not clear. But sometimes it is a freshwater shark. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Other times it is a land shark. Yep. Yeah. Both of which, not sure exists. Sometimes it's a wading shark in a very mm -hmm. small, shallow area. Mm -hmm. Boat shark. It's a boat it's shark. A boat, at one shark. Point. boat shark. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's almost never a deep ocean <laughs> shark. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Okay, I was going to go with a best, 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 sexy Apple commercial. Yeah. So I, it sounds like I was talking about like the uh, computer company. I'm not, I'm talking about the <laughs> Apple, the fruit. There's this hot topic manager is a, a witch, demon, mm -hmm. something yep. that does several times because they just keep reusing the same stuff in the movie, <laughs> a commercial sexily for the fruit called apple. Yep. It's very confusing, but I enjoyed it. I think the Witch of Endor, often as we see her, is not a cast member of this movie. I think she might be 
stock footage. She may be. <laughs> and and if that's the case, I think there should be legal limitations <laughs> on how you use stock footage. <laughs> also, and I know that we'll get here, but I'm not clear on, I think there are two incarnations of her or is she the same? Is it two different actresses? That is two different actresses. Yes. Oh, those are, okay. So, I had them as two different tutored, people. Like Little Red Riding Hood mm-hmm. and then The Witch. Those are different things that we're going to get to? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah, those are different people, I believe, playing the same character, but the movie's not sure. And let me just say, not super similar looking white woman. <laughs> like, well, I think she's a redhead, maybe enough. both times. Right. <laughs> I don't know. And of course, I am going to go with best worst child molestation <laughs> subplot. So... You know how in the hero's journey, there always needs to be that stumbling block at the end. Hey, aren't you that baseball player who (laughs) struck out during the big match? Hey, aren't you that boxer who lost the big fight? Our priest's subplot will be, hey, aren't you that guy who fucked a bunch of kids? And it will be a rubber chicken-esque punchline throughout (laughs) the entire film. Yeah, Yeah, that's true. The response is like, (laughs) you fucked those kids. Anyway, ah, noogie, whatever. Just fucking around (laughs) with you. Ah. It's cool. <laughs> That'll be a subplot, though. Yes. Speaking of which, I think we're going to take a quick break because that's in the movie. And then we'll be back to tell you all about Noah's shark. Oh, no. The shark is coming. I'll shoot it with my machine gun. Uh, it's not working. Yes, it is. Uh, kids, kids, what you doing there? We're playing shark attack. Oh, what's shark attack? Well, there's like a bad shark with a demon and he's attacking us, but I'm the bodyguard and I shot it. Uh Yeah, Uh but it's not dead. Yes, it is. Okay, okay. All right, that's enough of that. Why don't you guys play something else? (sighs) Fine. Okay. Oh, also, uh, can Daddy use your game for a movie? Because I could really use $100 from the Sci-Fi Channel. I mean, can't you think of a better movie, Dad? Nope. No, I cannot. Sure. I guess so. Thanks, great. Dad? Uh, yeah, kiddo? Are there other jobs than writing movies for the Sci-Fi Channel? Um, like fireman or banker? <laughs> Not for me, kids. Not for me. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just getting home now, so I'll send you an email. Okay, right, right. Okay, all right, bye. Kara? Damn it, guys. I just changed the locks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we know. Mm-hmm. The locksmiths, that was just us and mustaches. Ugh, I wondered why one of them needed the bathroom for 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. IBS isn't a joke, Kara. There are millions of us. Millions. You got it. Okay, so why did you hang a sign in my room that says invitation? Yeah, sorry. That was supposed to say intervention, but Eli got confused on the spelling. Confused on the spelling, I did, yes. Yeah, that tracks. Okay, so why are you having an intervention for me? <sighs> I mean, it's about the lying, Kara. The lying, yeah. Pretending to be a dentist for dead people. Saying that if people run out of hospice, the state is legally required to kill them with a cow gun. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. That's you guys. You guys said those things. I got the hate Mm, on the internet, but because you guys said them. We're not here to point blame, Kara. We're here to tell you about Masterclass. (sighs) What's Masterclass? With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn how to cook with Gordon Ramsay. You can improve your chess skills by watching Gary Kasparov, or you can learn magic from Penn and Teller. With over a hundred classes from a range of world-class instructors, that thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. And you don't have to make up that you're a dentist for dead people. I'm going to murder you both with an ax. Don't lash out, Kara. Not here. Not in front of Masterclass. I signed up for Masterclass for Steve Martin's course on comedy even before they were a sponsor. But I stay a member for their awesome cooking courses and much, much more. Yeah, I highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access to every Masterclass. And as a God Awful Movies listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash awful. That's masterclass.com slash awful for 15% off Masterclass. Guys, is the other side of this sign from the hospital down the street? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they weren't using it. It says under construction. Yeah. Everybody could see that it was under construction because of the walls and stuff, Karen. It's a waste of a sign, so we took it. Exactly. Yes. (sighs) Okay. Kara thinks you run out of hospice. (laughs) I hate you so much. (laughs) And we're back. 
And the movie opens on somebody playing with a toy boat in the bathtub. And there's nowhere near <laughs> enough CGI to hide that fact. This is supposed <laughs> to be Noah's Ark during the flood. Could they not afford actual water? I feel like actual water is relatively <laughs> cheap to get. No? <laughs> It's a really long intro with a lot of credits, and it's hard for me to believe that that many people worked on this movie. Yeah, I almost went with Best Worst Credits because we learned that the music for this movie was made by Ghost. All capital letters, by the way. Yep, all capital <laughs> letters, Ghost. I wrote in my notes, I feel like he wasn't a ghost before he saw what you used his music for, but that <laughs> might just be me. Pretty sure Ghost also worked for Gitmo doing torture music at some point. <laughs> oh, for sure. Because that's what happens next with the soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. What was that? There's this like awful high pitch. It's like my dog started barking. Yeah. Like, what was going on? <laughs> I wrote music note, TikTok sound that's supposed to blow my mind. <laughs> <laughs> and then my favorite, my favorite is that the movie both starts and ends with this weird PowerPoint scroll. Yep. That just says <laughs> Noah's shark on it. And then, and then my favorite, the sound effect of growling. Mm -hmm. Do sharks growl? They're Pretty sure sharks growl. That is far from the worst marine biology in the movie. <laughs> yeah. So at, at some point, every bad filmmaker learns that the Jaws sound was the noise of a lion's roar backwards, but they don't know how to do that. So they always just like grab bear sound dot wav and toss it into their movie. <laughs> and then play it backwards, I guess. Yep. All right. So we get the credits there and then we cut to a home video <laughs> of a priest who's about to do an exorcism on a girl named Amy Kinderman, who's been, quote, struggling with possession <laughs> since she was 14 years old. I love it. Struggling with possession. Where's that episode of addiction, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like somebody got the memo, like someone's cousin or sister was a psychologist and they were like, oh no, you, you struggle with depression. You're not yeah. a depressed person. <laughs> yeah. like, <laughs> oh, okay. So you're not a possessed person. Just struggling. Yeah. He also tells us, I, I want to say this movie, pretty religious, right? Like I was going to watch this no matter what. I was like, Noah's shark, we're covered. But like this movie does go out of its way to be like, no. The signs of possession are rebellious behavior and swearing. <laughs> <laughs> and Oh, and having hair in front of your face. Yes. <laughs> also, by the way, Amy Kinderman, good thing we know her full name because she literally, do we? does she ever come back into this movie? No. No, no she doesn't. What was Absolutely the point not. of this scene? Yeah. Well, I, I guess... We'll get to it. Uh, but I also are we going to get to the point of the scene? <laughs> yeah, sure? we are. We are. And it makes me so happy. But before we get to that, I just want to touch on one line in this. He goes, if God, he or she wants us <laughs> to blah, blah, blah. But I, I feel like if you believe in God enough for exorcism, you probably aren't open to God being a she. Oh, for right? sure. Like, I, don't, I think the Venn diagram of people who are open to God's <laughs> gender identity and exorcists is two separate circles. For sure. This movie is so confusing with some of the characters because I'm like, is it trying to be progressive? Was it? Maybe. <laughs> who are these people? Very confusing. Like there's a handful of things. Yeah. Where I was like, oh, OK, I'm into it. No, not into it. Not into <laughs> it. <laughs> Okay, so now I guess, according to Eli, we're going to get the point of the scene now. <laughs> you explain it when we get there. Yes. <laughs> so Amy and her mom show up at this priest's house where he, like, does his exorcisms on his home court. And mom immediately is like, all right, so do I have to fucking stay or do I, do I just, like, take off? Like a shitty mom doing daycare drop off. Do I need to hang out or can I go play bingo? Because, you know, if yeah. I catch it before three, <laughs> it's two cards for a dollar. <laughs> oh, and it's so odd because it's, yes, it's this priest's house. They're doing the whole shtick of like, like the office, you know, like he's being filmed. Mm -hmm. And so there's like a weird, <laughs> there's like a weird filter on the camera. Found footage, yeah. And he keeps referencing the show, like this is a television show? Yes. This is his, like, Twitch channel or something like <laughs> I know, that. know, right? But he calls it <laughs> The Show. Yeah. And then she's like, I don't want to be here because I think I'm going to get raped. But instead of, like, looking scared, she starts, like, talking dirty to him? Yep. 
Like, what is this softcore porn? It was so weird. Terrifying. It is a weird look. I'm not, I think that this actress went to the genre she knew the best. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, oh no, you're scared. And she was like, yeah, no, I know. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> Just going on many vids. And they were like, no, uh, you know what? We'll keep it. We'll keep the footage. But yeah, that's the point of the scene. The point is the like wackety schmackety do dirty talk bit she does about being a bad little girl are her. Listen to this, listen to this Heath. Are her accusing him of rape? Yeah. And that will be the running joke for the rest of the movie. What? Yeah, for yes. sure. That he's a priest. So he like diddles kids. But but he does or doesn't actually do that, according well, to Well, he kind of plays no. it down. So yeah. no, he swears in this scene. He's like, no, no, no. This is the devil. And he even says, this is the devil's oldest trick. And I was like, I'm sorry, the devil's <laughs> oldest trick is to accuse priests of abusing kids. <laughs> Okay, you you can see how I'm confused by this, right? <laughs> crystal clear, Heathleton. I'd love the movie to be more than crystal clear about this. Okay, mm -hmm. whatever. So the point is that she's accused him of sexual assault, but she's actually possessed by a demon or Satan. Yeah. Like actually is, according to the movies. Well, yeah, because remember as she's leaving, she's like, I'm a demon. Yes. <laughs> in the she doorway. pops back in to be like, hey, just to clarify, I am a demon and you didn't, you didn't fuck me. I, now that I realize we wrote into the movie a priest fucking a child, that's, that would seem like that's real. But it's not. It's not. I'm a demon. And then I love that he like turns to the camera up and he's like, did you hear that? He doesn't say, did you get that? He says, oh, no, he does. He goes, did you get that? And the, the, uh, the camera up goes, Get what? Like, he's, like, fucking with his camera like he wasn't <laughs> recording, right? And he goes, get what? And I'm like, okay, so you couldn't even see it? Yep. Like, I get that maybe you didn't see it through the lens, <laughs> but, like, it was very loud and obvious that that girl just demon spoke to you guys. She starts doing a demon frog dance as soon as the camera turns on, she stops. <laughs> yeah, and he's literally like, I don't know what you're talking about. I, did, I missed it. I missed it completely. And there's just a tiny little insane moment here at the end of the scene, but I have to talk about it. He's like, oh, you didn't get that? I can't believe it. And then he leans his head forward and for no reason that will ever be explained, the cameraman puts his hat on his head. <laughs> let, me, let me say, the cameraman puts the priest's hat onto the priest like he's dressing a toddler and then he just walks out into the rain. Uh, I have to pee now. Okay, but the hat doesn't get... Ah, uh, fine. And he takes the hat back off. It's very weird. It's very toddler, yeah. Yeah, and he goes out into the rain and he hugs a pillar on the front yeah. porch of his house and like looks forlorn. <laughs> like like he's auditioning scene. for Juliet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's established. That's a <laughs> demon inside the girl. The priest is not guilty of what she accused him of. Right. That's, that's what we're saying? Doesn't matter though because we never see this scene again. Never matters. No. And we never hear about this girl again. It, it does, never affects the plot of the movie. Not back. Okay, from here... <laughs> We cut to somebody doing a narration of the Old Testament story of Noah and the Ark. But then they add their own bullshit to the movie, which is the Witch of Endor and her book of the Bible. And they think that if they just throw in some like vows and these, we won't notice when it's like, and he begat Boham, who begat <laughs> Gahab, who begat Gov. So then, like, there was totally the witch. This is the Bible still. Hello, today. I am of the Bible. Okay, is this part of the can Bible? You, can you explain this to me? Is this real? Yeah, like the witch of Endor sounds like it's from Lord of the Rings. So the, yeah, yes. The, the claim is that Noah had a kid named Zadkiel that got cut from the Bible. <laughs> mm -hmm. His name was in the book of the witch of Endor, but that entire book got cut, and the Witch of Endor was just in Samuel for a second, and she almost got cut from Samuel because of wizardry and necromancy or something. So the yes, they're saying that God did edits, like God wrote stuff, and then he was like, no, this, this part's dumb. I can get rid of this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the fun little pseudoscience here. There, you know all the like lost books of the Bible? Mm -hmm. Like the Apocrypha? Right, exactly. So some of them are real. Some of them were big parts of the Bible for a really long time. The book of Endor is not that. <laughs> <laughs> so what is this? It shows up in the 1970s, and it is a way for Wiccans to try to include Wicca and like the witch cult hypothesis into the Bible. 
So basically, hippies in the 70s were like, you know, it would be fucking dope is if there was a book of the Bible written by a witch who was like contemporary to all the Bible stuff that happened. And so one of them who, you know, like went to Catholic school for a second before she became a Wiccan was like, actually, there is a witch in the book of Saul. Saul goes and talks to a lady who has a familiar spirit. So they wrote this book. They took dictation from the witch of Endor while in a trance. They wrote this book and then just sort of like tried to (laughs) pretend it was apocrypha. Okay, so so the woman who is sometimes referred to as the Witch of Endor is a real character in the Bible, but she just shows up mm-hmm. once in like one little utterance. Yes. yes, and she's not a witch. In the Bible, she's just like, it's like they're, Saul's walking through town and he's like, ah, God, I got to get a hold of God. Does anyone know? And they're like, oh, yeah, next to the tailor, there's a lady with a familiar spirit. But don't go two doors down because that lady, she's a baker and she does not have a familiar <laughs> spirit. And that's the close. By the way, she's not like evil or bad. Saul doesn't yell at her. She literally is just like, oh, you need to talk to God real quick. Come here. <laughs> Carl the Pug of Pegacorn rises out of her body and is like, hey, I heard you need to talk to God. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. He's mad at you for something or whatever it is. Okay. Oh, so she's just like she's just like a, an old school psychic. Yeah. Yeah. She's just got a crystal ball. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. So all that happened the same way that like Christianity happened, to be fair. Like the Wiccans did the same thing as the Christians, but like not as well in 1970. Right. But you know the rules. It, yeah. you, there's a tie, there's a cutoff yeah. before. No, no they were past is... the cutoff. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> but I should point out, lest we lend too much legitimacy to this, the whole Zakamuka bike thing, I could find that nowhere. You're talking about Zadkiel? Oh, Zadkiel. Zadkiel. Yeah, I could find that nowhere. Zadkiel is apparently the secret son of Noah that we don't know about, like the fourth son. But so, th- so this movie just made that up, is what you're saying? Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, at least it appears to be. Okay. Well, here's what they made up. We get the story of Zadkiel here. Mm-hmm. Zadkiel was uh, just hanging out by a lake, and Satan showed up. I think in the form of a talking shark. Form of a talking shark. Correct. Okay. Land shark. <laughs> It was a land shark at this point. <laughs> and Satan, the land shark, was like, can I get a spot on your dad's ark when that flood happens? And Zadkiel's like, no, my dad already picked the two sharks for the spots. Is that what this is? is yes. This he is. Is exact, I'm pretty sure I he have this exactly right. exactly describing the plot of this, this movie. Is the plot, yes, but is. did they take fish on the boat? Wait, 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 wait. On the, the only ark? Thing I- I know. Wouldn't they just swim alongside it? You don't need fish on an ark. Like these are great questions. These are. I'm pretty sure it specifically says they only took like the ones that breathe or something. Like not fish. Right, because if there's a flood, the fish are going to be fine. Yeah. Also, this whole time, the, the only thing I could focus on was the Noah character had like a mop glued to his face. Yeah. And that was supposed to be his beard. <laughs> it was really rough. It was like rough. woven. He had a woven beard. Yeah. And it was really intense. It's very silly. Okay, (laughs) so Noah already picked the two sharks, but then Shark Satan is like, okay, that sucks, but I'll promise to make you, Zed Keel, have magical animal whispering powers of like a bunch of other really cool animals. Beastmaster. Yeah, he becomes a beast or he he gets promised to be a beastmaster. So he does sneak Satan Shark on the ark, but then Noah finds out and hits his son Zadkiel with a stick because he's mad about that. Yeah. Oh my God. Wait, this is all explained in this yes! scene? Yes. I'm shocked that I'm pretty sure I have this right. <laughs> so this was supposed to be taking place in the Ark? Yes. Because yeah. they, they just look like they were in somebody's garage. They were, mm-hmm. to be clear. <laughs> but I'm yeah. so good. I thought this was all just like weird exposition. They were actually trying to show us. Yeah. The, oh well. God, okay. A secret Bible story. Okay. I don't want to give this movie too much credit. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Before we move on to the rest of the story, do you guys think he keistered the shark onto the ark? <laughs> he what? Do you think he smuggled the shark inside onto the ark his ass? Up his butt. Oh, well, it was a big shark. I feel like the fin is going to be a problem. We don't know how big Zad keels. What about the teeth? Also the teeth, I suppose. Backwards. You do it backwards. No, back. What? That would be so much worse. <laughs> Forward. Oh, no, because you got to get it back out. That's what I'm saying. Then it's like it's like, uh, the you know, the the police with the, the spikes for tires. You know, you can go one way, but not the other. That's right. Maybe he dressed it up like a sheep. 
Yeah, he probably just put a fucking mop beard on it and just walked it right into he, the well, Okay, put a hat on it. He didn't do shit. We see what happens next. <laughs> oh, he didn't okay, do shit. Right, he just he he has this conflict. Noah and Zadkiel argue here. Noah hits him with a stick, but the shark was just like standing there next to him the whole time. So he just like walked onto the ark and he was like, "Yeah, this is just my friend." Groucho Marx kind of looks like a shark. Like, <laughs> I don't know. This is my friend, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> but then doesn't he eat Zadkiel's head? Yes. Why? Why not? Because <laughs> he snuck a shark on. There was already two. <laughs> what? There's only two slots for sharks. This fucked up the whole seating chart. Yeah, but they don't explain what happens to the shark. They only explain what happens to Zadkiel. So, like, oh, they threw the shark overboard. He does say that. Oh, so he just goes to his, his you know, his homeland. Yeah. Okay. Yep. They seem very confused about what a shark is because they're like, yeah. And then the shark gets thrown over. No, the shark gets returned to the sea and it's better yeah. for the shark. I really wanted there to be a scene where Noah's like, get off my boat. <laughs> Shit, you're a shark. You now just have more space to walk around. And none of this is in the Bible, to be no. clear. Right? None of this is in the Bible or even the fake Bible I found on like witchnews dot backslash fun <laughs> WordPress dot fake website. So this is where I'm very confused about like who made this movie, because it's clearly ultra religious, yet it's fundamentally blasphemous at the same time. OK, who's it for? like Wiccan Christians? Who's it for is such a fascinating question, right? Because you name your movie Noah's Shark. I'm like, okay, corny shark movie. I get it. A little bit of Bible sprinkled in, but mostly it's just going to be shark movie, right? When I see shark in the title, I expect shark. Surprisingly little shark in this movie. <laughs> but it's just lots of like, long narrative of the priest reading the Bible in a monotone, but like the fake Bible. <laughs> yeah, right. Fake Bible narrative. Right. So we actually cut to the priest again here. That whole thing was the priest. His name's Father Benna, and he's doing voiceover work because I guess his exorcism Twitch channel company got shut down. It, it got foiled by a Me Too demon. Yeah, yeah of course. Correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. it makes sense. So he's now working for a producer guy doing a voiceover. Yeah, his producer is also a priest, but like not a good one. An ex-priest. Oh, he's an ex-priest. So he was like an evangelical money priest, but he stole from the church. So now he produces biblical documentaries. <laughs> well, and this is the part I also don't get because this guy is kind of my favorite. He's great. Other than his teeth. <laughs> okay, thank teeth you. Teeth are really hard to look at. Okay, I want to talk about the teeth. I want to get it out there. Okay, this has been lingering between us. I think he has the most realistic shark teeth of anybody in the movie. <laughs> he does. Definitely. Far more than the shark. His teeth appear to be have you ever seen like a cartoon of an old graveyard? <laughs> That's what his teeth look like. <laughs> Like someone's be supposed to be unmasking a janitor inside his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he was old man Jenkins all along. They change color between shots in a way that will really upset me. But also everything in this movie changes color between yeah. shots. Sometimes they're like a dark <laughs> asparagus urine yellow. <laughs> you associate that with a color. Yeah. Interesting. You don't know what asparagus urine looks like. Okay. <laughs> You've got like a synesthesia thing going on. <laughs> His mouth smells like my urine looks. <laughs> honestly, honestly, great description of this actor. It is. <laughs> if he was lost on a beach and we were trying to find him and we needed to give a description yeah, to no, the police. He, he's, he acts like asparagus pee. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And so kind of coming back to these weird inconsistencies in the movie where this is a religious movie that's highly blasphemous. This guy's whole shtick is that he's like, he's an ex-priest who is like skimming, as he called it. It's not illegal to skim off the top of the church funds. Yep. Which like, he just comes out and says it. Okay. And the whole time, his entire role in this film is like, to be the the stuff you don't say out loud. He's like Clarence Thomas's decision. Like he wrote the stuff you just think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like that's who this actor is, right? He just says all the things that we know 
evangelical pastors are thinking but aren't supposed to say out loud. Yeah. yeah. I guess he's really just a plot device more than anything else, though, because he has a former parishioner who ended up dying and willing him a bunch of information about where the Ark might actually be in real life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. So he just moves it along. He just he knows all the stuff, but he's like too stupid to really be wise about it. See, podcast listener, Heath was saying before the record, he didn't follow along with the plot of this movie, <laughs> but he's got it. <laughs> he's got it. It's the classic story of someone's great grandfather who found Noah's Ark in the middle of Turkey, which is where it apparently <laughs> landed. Mount Ararat, yeah. Yeah, and so they left their journal as well as a single board of the Ark to their granddaughter, <laughs> who then gave it to their evangelical mega pastor, who right. got fired for skimming off the top, and now he makes religious documentaries and he wants to follow the Ark to see where it is. That old <laughs> That's the movie, right? Yarn. That's the plot. It's yeah. oh, yeah. that old song. Yep. Okay. So this is when... The the former. Are you following it, Kara? I think so now. I think so. It's, not, it's not dead people dentistry or <laughs> hospice <laughs> doling out, whatever it is you do for a living. Hospice executions. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. So this is when the former televangelist, who now is producing stuff, explains to the priest that this old timey explorer, the great grandfather of this woman who is part of his flock back in the day, this old guy found a plank from the ark and he took it back. And it also, there was a, a, a witch map. The witch of Endor has a map to Mount Ararat. And he, yep, which journal, which journal? The, and it's in the journal. Okay. And he's like, yeah, so I got, I got this journal. I got this piece of wood. Let's go look at the piece of wood. And televangelist guy, his name is Buster Pretorius, by the way, just to. Uh, yeah, we learned that in. later because they call him Pretorius a bunch. And then at one point they're like, I got you, Buster. Yep. Not a great pick. That's like, I think it's the most popular surname for <laughs> white South Africans. Like, it's just a weird pick. <laughs> Pretorius. Buster Pretorius. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> so they go to look at that guy's piece of wood from the Ark. And <laughs> it's, so, so, it's, it's, it's a plank from Home Depot. Like, uh -huh. we're, we're to believe that Noah did a really fucking great job of milling this plant Planing. just yeah. right. <laughs> when nothing else, by the way, later when we get to the ark, nothing else looks like that. Nope. No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so he shows him the plank and he's like, yeah, I got all the info from the lady who died. It's got a, a journal of how to find the rest of the ark. And then the priest is like, all right, let me, I, I'm going to do some science now. I'm going to check this plank to see if you're making this up. And he puts his hand over the plank. Oh, he full on heavy pets that thing. Yeah, like, it's yeah. very sexual. It's very sexual. Handsy. It's fingering. Is he yeah. just <laughs> finger fucks the shit out of this board? Yeah, there's knot holes. It, it gets it gets very yeah, bad. It's, it's graphic. Here's the thing: if you're gonna try to make it look like you're not fingering a thing in a movie or television, you don't press the two first fingers together and gently <laughs> stroke. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. You don't make the shocker. Don't do with the shocker. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Cares faster than me. Okay. <laughs> First she takes our what is, then she beats Heath to the shocker. We can feel ourselves being replaced. She doesn't even know she's on this podcast. <laughs> so he does an extremely sexual pet of this plank. And, he, and he's like, I think I hear a flying shark eating a lumberjack. And we see him here see that in a vision. And he's like, yeah, this all checks out. This is a real plank from Noah's Ark. Yeah. yeah. And can I just say this movie missed an opportunity to do the rest of the movie about an evil plank of wood. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> That would have been amazing. They kind of did that by accident for a while, but they don't focus on it enough. You're right. They should have yeah. they should have leaned into that. But you know what I really what I did not like about this scene that he uses the same microphone to record his VO that I am using right now. He yeah. does. He has an yeah. RE20. He does. Yep. It made me really uncomfortable. Yeah. He doesn't have a pop filter or a wind filter or anything on it. He does not. I have my pop filter on it. Yeah. There you go. How did you know? <laughs> Probably because I sent you that picture that one time when you made me laugh and I spit coffee all over <laughs> everything in my studio. That's right. <laughs> that did happen, yeah. I feel like I can still kind of see old remnants. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, the, the priest decides, yeah, okay, this is definitely possessed wood. I'm going to go get my official lab instruments to deal with that. And he, he 
comes back with a cross. That's his yep. special tool. He's like, I, I need further research. And then just comes back with a cross. And that is it. Yeah. And the cross says Jerusalem in black Sharpie in the middle of it. It does. Yep. Do we know why? Uh, made in Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. It's, a, it's official. It's a Jewish cross. <laughs> I, it's, it's a weird pick. Yeah. So he's using his Jerusalem cross to exercise the shark demon out of the plank of wood. I think that's yep. exactly what Am I he's correct doing. About that? Yeah, yeah, and then and then CG fire breaks out. <laughs> 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 At what point does something lose the title of CG? <laughs> Right. Like if they had held up red construction paper oh. over this piece of wood and yelled crackle, crackle, it would have been more believable. Oh, for sure. Because it's this terrible CG fire when you're looking at the forward shot, like the shot basically over the shoulder of him exercising the wood. But then when you look at the reverse shot of his face while he's like saying the words, it's like they're just switching on and off different colored flash. <laughs> and just like <laughs> wads of orange clay, like Wallace and Gromit show up. It's weird. <laughs> Someone's clearly like vaping a jewel on the floor <laughs> up at him, but it's just the one vape. Oh, it's so bad. Those are illegal now. They are. And also, he's blissfully unaware that any of this is happening because he's really close to that fire. Like, yeah. real close. Yeah. But the fire ends. And then, okay, I want to say what happens. And then I, I can say what I think the movie is going for. I have a theory about this one. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay. So the fire ends. He looks at a mouse. He stomps the mouse to death. Sure does, right away. Oh, there's so much more than that. We've got to unpack what's going on here. <laughs> okay, the fire ends. They cut to a found footage shot of a mouse in an alleyway. We see Fievel yeah. going west. Yeah. It's yeah. like a completely different color temperature. It's clearly nothing that they shot themselves. I was super confused. I was like, why are we outside in an alley now? But then they cut back to him and then you kind of are putting together, oh, he's supposed to be looking down at a mouse. And then, yeah, he just <laughs> steps on it. Who steps on a mouse? Yeah, well, the, the pastor priest, guy. That's who the fuck does. Yeah, Burgess <laughs> Meredith or whatever the fuck he called himself is like, hey, dude, why'd you step on the mouth? And he's like, no, 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 let me explain. Do you remember the story in the Bible where Jesus asks a guy if he's full of demons and he says, we're legion? And everyone gets that wrong and thinks oh, it's a yeah, name. Oh, yeah, they do the Legion thing a lot. Yeah. What is the Legion thing? Explain this to me. So he's saying that the demon that was in the wood jumped into the mouse. Yes. And he had to kill it. Like Azazel in Fallen. Yes. No, I get that part. But but who's Legion? What does the Legion have to do with that? Legion is the name that the guy gives to Jesus. He's like, my name is Legion for we are many. So the trick is, no, his name isn't Legion. He's kind of alluding to the fact that there's, you know, just there's a, a bunch of, of us. We're all over the place. Chock a block full of demons. Right, but who are they? Chock a block of devils? Yeah, it's a bunch of flying demons that can go like a handful of cubits after they die into something else, including mice. Yeah. Okay, because later on, there's a bunch of people that say we are Legion, but they don't become mice. Great question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They just forgot about this. They yeah, they're forgot. just like, we are Legion. And I was like, is this a comic book reference? I'm so confused. <laughs> I thought at this point he was going to try to like stomp out Buster Pretorius too and just like assume. <laughs> right. he's, like, <laughs> he kills the mouse. He turns to Buster. I'm sorry, man. You're the only one here. <laughs> Pretty sure you're Legion. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I think I know what's going on. Right. So the mouse is dead. The demon, one of the Legions is dead. And they both decide like, yeah, okay, we've got all the information we need. Let's go find that ark on Mount Ararat. Yeah, this is just, this is the next logical step. Obviously, <laughs> Obviously once you've killed the mouse that the demon from the fire from board. The board of wood jumped into, you're ready to go find the Ark of the Covenant. Then you go find the ark. No, the ark. No, it's ark. the old story. <laughs> yep. I love, like who writes the chapter? To, so you guys know that we all work from a, a document together where we know where we are in the movie at any given time. Who writes the chapter heads? That would be me. The <laughs> like th this ominous heartbeat and the hottest chick they know lying with some apples. <laughs> yes. I believe that's Eli's just his description of visually what we see when they of cut the here. What happens in the next scene? <laughs> yeah. And did I nail it? No, you, you did. So and this is exactly, exactly. What my, this is my best worst. And yes, you nailed it. Yeah. This is this is the sexy apple. We cut to the witch of Endor doing an ad for like. Calvin Klein apples. Yeah. <laughs> Granny Smith by yeah. Klein. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
exactly. Yeah, I wrote in my notes, how much did they offer the girl they knew who worked at Hot Topic to be in their movie? Yes. Whatever it was, it wasn't enough. It was not enough. <laughs> and of course I wrote, you can't just cut in a bunch of scenes of a woman in a cloak and a CGI shark and expect any of this to mean anything. <laughs> like they cut to the same shot of the Hot Topic girl 40 times in this movie. So many times. That's For why no I think reason. it must it must be found footage. It has to be, because it's the same shot. I feel like she showed up and they were the worst. They got one shot of her and she was like, You guys fucking suck. And so they just <laughs> used the five seconds they got of her before she quit. Yeah. Yeah. Over and over. That has to be it. Yeah. <laughs> so we see her doing the Apple's Calvin Klein thing. And then she does some kind of spell on Eli. You're saying this is a different woman? The little red riding hood person. See, now this, here's my theory. <laughs> my theory is they showed up. She laid down on some apples. They were like, if you think about it, Bill Cosby never got a fair trial. She was like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> they found a different redhead at that mall who like worked at Ann Annie's Pretzels. She was like their, <laughs> their second choice. And they were like, will you do the other shots of the Witch of Endor? And she was like, well, my mom's picking me up at five. And they were like, Perfect. it's fine. We'll do it out in the parking lot where we're shooting the rest of this movie. So I think those two women, different humans that they may be, are both supposed to be the Witch of Endor. Wait, but there are three, to be fair. There's the lady lying on the ground with the apples. Mm -hmm. There's the girl walking around in the hood. Yes. Right. Who I think they're the same person. No, oh. I do not think so. And then there's the like woman who's probably about 10 years older than them in like really intense who has CG the horns. makeup. Right. And who's yeah. going for like a Maleficent thing. Mm -hmm. In fairness, it literally doesn't matter if it's one, two, or three different people. That's true. To the plot. But they're all playing the same role is what you're saying? I believe so, yeah. They are legion. They are, <laughs> they are okay, legion. Okay, that's all you got to say. Just, yeah. <laughs> so, they are legion girl that the director knows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then we get another flashback to the grandpa who was, you know, checking out the ark and brought back that plank. And he's writing in his journal. And we also see his... Very large, modern, silly machete sword that like yes! some asshole who made this movie buys way too many of these swords at three in the morning on TV. Yeah. That's what's yeah. the prop. No question. He turned to the rest of the cast and he was like, you're not going to believe this, but there were only a hundred of these made. And I got <laughs> the last one. So please be careful with this. And then and then he sees the girl in the hood. And so he starts wandering after her to try and, I guess, catch her or understand right. who she is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's so creepy. Yeah. He's writing in his diary and he's like, dear diary, just one more thing. I think a lady demon's walking by. I'm going to go follow her. Yeah. I'm going to yeah, check yeah. her out, see what she's up to. Mm -hmm. And he whistles at her and he's like, my siren, my muse. So now what we're watching is what's supposed to be like one of the protagonists, like a good guy in the movie is stalking some lady. That's all he knows. Yeah. Biblical street harassment. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but- I guess there's a little bit of a good ending to this particular scene anyway. Right after that, we cut, and then this grandpa guy wakes up inside Noah's Ark. So he got abducted by this witch, right? Yep. So this witch is in charge of, like, the Ark Museum in 1920 that's hidden <laughs> on Mount Ararat. And then he's like, okay, this is a weird thing. I'm going to go ahead and grab a piece of wood from the ark so I could prove this later. And he starts prying the plank that we saw before with his stupid QVC knife. Yeah. And you know how boats have lots of extra boards you can just pry free <laughs> right, yeah. without creating a problem for the structure? Also, I want to talk about this ark set because th there's a lot of bad sets in this movie. 99% <laughs> of the sets are just like the park near whoever's house made this film. Right. I would say the Ark is where they met their greatest challenge. It's very clearly a barn filled with like modern chains and modern screws and nails. They cannot <laughs> escape the yeah. 21st century in this barn. Yeah. They're having a tough time with it. But yeah, it's so limited in what they can show of it. They pretty much only ever have like one exact shot. And if someone like takes two steps either direction, they are no longer in the fucking arc. Yeah. There's like a Tesla in there for a second <laughs> by accident. Yeah, It's a server farm. Yeah. <laughs> so the point is he takes this piece of wood and I guess we're to believe that this witch abducted him and then just let him take a piece of wood from her boat and leave. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. She like abducted him, put him on the ark and then went away. And was like, yeah, do your thing. You want to get a souvenir gift shops that way. But yeah, you can take a plank. Sure. Go ahead. And then he's like, he's like aware for some reason after he takes the plank. He, he literally says these words. The road ahead would be fraught with evil. Like, how does he know that? Well, yes. yes. He, Great question. He, <laughs> he leaves. He, thank you. Yes. He leaves the ark. And then we see him journaling some more. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> exactly. He, he says what Carriage said. And then he says, I didn't know that death would be so close. You can't write that in a journal temporarily. That's impossible. <laughs> I know. He did. Little did I know he was standing right behind me. <laughs> Well, speaking oh of which, God. something was standing right next to him. Uh, it's the the land pond shark. And <laughs> land he gets shark. attacked. Okay. We have to talk about pond shark, right? Because look, I get it. You're making a shark movie. You need some water. You need <laughs> some water. They find the fucking shallowest <laughs> puddle. Yes. In this state, it stinks. Right. You can see someone telling their kid not to play in it in the background. Yes. And this is where this evil demon shark will be throughout the movie. Yes. And I love when they show the shark attacks. I mean, they're just so good, you guys. Like, it's a paper mache dorsal fin. It's truly me. (laughs) I I do puppets for my son. My son loves when I do puppets. Uh It's the same level of commitment. Like, rah, 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 rah. (laughs) Yes, it's amazing. And it's like on land next to him somehow. And they're like wrestling. And then they cut away. They do this multiple times in the movie. They show land shark, which was pond shark. But then they cut away to a deep ocean CGI shot of a CGI shark. shark yep. <laughs> and you're like, where where did he just go? Definitely the freest shark they could find on oh, the for internet. Sure. It's the only one they could find that wasn't watermarked. Absolutely. I was going to say, if there had been a watermark on this shark, I would have been 0% surprised. <laughs> but I guess the shark gave him a chomp, so he, he runs to his <laughs> the shark gave him a chomp. Jan Spark backpack, <laughs> pulls out a hatchet, and cuts... The rest of his arm off? I was so confused by this scene because I blinked and I missed it. Why would you do this? But then they go back to it later. So we've all seen 127 Hours, right? Or whatever yes. that movie was. Yep, of course. Like you, you can't just cut off your own arm. Like that's not a thing. If you had to do it, it would be really hard. You'd probably bleed to death and die. But regardless, my favorite part is that they show him walking and his... His sleeve is somehow stapled up. So now he's like a Vietnam vet. Like, he, you know, like he just cut off his own arm, but now he's he's walking around like he's been to the doctor and he has a clean amputation. And it's like below the shoulder. Yet later, it's at the wrist. Yep. They can't decide where he amputated his arm. And it goes back and forth like a cigarette in a bad scene. Maybe he chopped it off too low at first and then he was like, I got to take a little bit more. <laughs> no, you know what? Now I took too much. I'm going to oh. I'm gonna tie this back on. It's like when you cut your fi- one fingernail too short and then you try and even them out, you know? Yeah, That's and then like you just the end up with no day. fingers. That's yeah. the worst day of my life. <laughs> but again, like we often say like, oh, don't watch this movie. It's racist. It's bad, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. You can absolutely watch this movie. <laughs> and you should watch this movie just for the very clear arm that is in his shirt as he walks. <laughs> I've never seen a worse arm being gone. And I've been a seven-year-old playing pirates. <laughs> He might as well be walking away like, I have an arm. No, I don't. I don't. I am missing an arm. It's Mm -hmm. tucked in. It's so bad. The whole point is he's chopped his arm off now and he's like, all right, I got to bring back this plank because that's incontrovertible evidence of Christianity. Before I die, I got to get this back to the United States so that people can be Christian. What even was that? If I bring back wood, people will believe me? No, they won't. It's wood. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) What? I'm pretty sure that's the plot. Though. That's what the movie is saying. Yep. I think you're right. So it, it looks like a demon ran a very complex plot to set up an evil Jewish pond shark to eventually attack some guy like 6,000 years later and then demon prophet or something. So we're going to take another quick break to give all that some thought and then we'll be back to see how it goes in act two of <laughs> Noah's shark. <laughs> And I think Nicola and Marsh want to go to the mama. So um, we'll probably take I, I think it's pronounced MoMA. No, because it's like the mama, the mother nope. of all museums. Nope. That's not, why not it's- what MoMA means. Nope. Where is he? You. Whoa, Gara. Hey, what's up? 
Eli tweeted a bunch of mean stuff at me. Eli, you did? Why? Yep, I did. It's because of my backbone. I had no choice. What does your backbone have to do with any of this? <laughs> oh, silly, Kara. Not that backbone. Backbone is the newest game-changing essential that transforms your iPhone into a handheld console. So you can play anywhere, anytime. You simply plug in your iPhone to the backbone and then you enjoy console quality controls right there on the phone with responsive buttons and triggers, clickable analog sticks, and more. And you can play Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and App Store games right away. Wait, you can play games from your computer and PlayStation on your phone? I sure can. I just use Remote Player Steam Link and I can play the best new games wherever I go. I started playing Undermine on it, but over vacation, I got caught up on Grand Theft Auto, Spider-Man, and even Elden Ring right on my iPhone anywhere in my house. No TV required. Okay, but what if I don't already have a console? No problem. You can stream hundreds of games like FIFA, Halo, Minecraft, and more through cloud gaming services like Xbox Game Pass, NVIDIA Geoforce Now, and Google Stadia. It's why TechCrunch called the backbone the closest they've ever seen to a portable Xbox. All right, that sounds great. Where do I sign up? Go to playbackbone.com slash awful now to order your backbone until June 30th and get free access to over 350 console games and perks, including one month of free Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, one month of free Apple Arcade, two months free of Google Stadia Pro, and three months free of Discord Nitro. Find your next adventure at playbackbone.com slash awful. Okay, I'll admit that controller seems cool, but I still don't understand why you tweeted that mean stuff at me. Oh, because I'm a gamer now, Kara, like with an eye. Oh, I see. Okay, well, I'm going to break your backbone then. No, it's so cool. No, I meant your spine. Oh, that one's less cool. So, sure. Demons gather round me. Yes, master. I have a plan to corrupt one of the sons of Noah. Oh, I thought we were already doing that with Ham. Yeah. We are. We're just... We're also doing another son. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, anyway, you shall appear to him as a shark and ask to be led on board the ark. Yeah, wait. Why, what? Because, you know, you're not supposed to be there. It's just the two sharks, so you'll be a... Th so, trespassing? The plan is trespassing. That is a weird no, plan. No, no, let me finish. Because then Noah will find you and you'll eat the kid, so it's also murder? Right, right. Okay, that's also murder. Just quick thing, if you don't mind my asking, what's the longer game plan here? I mean, if you must know, it's so that the Witch of Endor can use this story to lead man to his tomb. And mm. this has nothing to do with the fact that you two just started dating? What? No. No. Yeah, it's totally because they just started dating. Yeah, completely. You guys want to come watch your band play on Thursday? Absolutely not. Super duper no. And we're back. When we left off, some Christian lady's grandpa chopped off his arm for no reason. <laughs> Meanwhile, Buster <laughs> Pretorius is walking out of his film production studio and he's on the phone with, I believe, his bookie about yeah. money that he owes the bookie. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. I don't think bookies call you Buster when they threaten your life, do they? Right, but his, well, name, his name is Buster. Buster. We didn't know that yet, oh, though. Yeah, his first okay. name is Buster. Okay, in fairness, though, the bookie sounds like a cartoon animal who's kind of dumb, who might be like, you owe me money, Buster. Like, Yeah, I wrote, how is the disembodied telephone call voice so bad at acting? <laughs> really <laughs> terrifying. Really not that hard. Yeah. So, whatever. This doesn't matter the plot either. At this point, <laughs> what's very important to the plot is a guy in a very large red onesie with a cross drawn in black magic marker on the <laughs> mm -hmm. chest. Yes. And he also has a black mask, like masquerade ball mask, mm -hmm. kind of hockey mask thing. He has a jug of gasoline and he... <laughs> He holds it up to like show the audience of the movie that it's gasoline. <laughs> a la Jim from The Office. Yes. <laughs> and he starts dousing. We're supposed to see that he's dousing the outside of this studio with gasoline and lighting it on fire. But he's dousing the glass door. <laughs> yeah. With gasoline. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we see it just run down to the floor. 
Yeah, I wrote in my notes, I don't know how to break it to fire mask crucifix jumpsuit, but no matter how much gas you splash on a glass window, it still won't catch fire. <laughs> it's not where you want to start is with glass. So, yeah, this guy who looks like he looks like a henchman for Santa Claus. Like if mm -hmm. Santa Claus had like ninja bad guy henchman, that's what we're looking at. <laughs> but it, it does have that like kind of Jason-y like vibe where the mask is like too small for his face. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's like a little kid mask. Yeah. It's um amazing because right after the guy is catching the glass on fire, supposedly, for whatever reason, I don't know why they needed to make Buster be on the phone twice. Like, that was confusing. <laughs> yep. Like, before the fire guy shows up, he's on the phone with his bookie. But after, he's on the phone with a Tinder date? Yeah. Okay, but here's the thing. This phone call, he's supposed to be distracted, and then he goes, oh, man, my thing is on fire. Except the person who made this movie made his grandmother do the woman's voice for oh this God, call. Oh, my God, I wrote the same thing. The <laughs> yes. woman on the phone has to be 90 years old. She had the weirdest old lady voice. And he's like, you sound sexy. And she's like, what's yes. that? What's that, Sonny? Eh? Well, my teeth do come out. <laughs> Wink. <It's> like <laughs> the weirdest. Like she has the weirdest voice. I think it was Amy's mom from that first scene. <laughs> No question. It's a very <laughs> older lady and she is very uncomfortable, right? Because this is supposed to be like older lecherous priest tries to trick young girl into doing a reading at his apartment. But she's like, oh, yeah, I mean, you put a Werther's up your ass. I'll get it out if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> With Jesus. my tongue. The inside of Eli's brain <laughs> must be just a wild place. <laughs> right. So whatever this... Santa Claus henchman lights the studio on fire. And then we cut back to Father Benna in the hotel room and he's reading more of the journal. And then he starts praying before bed. And then he has a shark nightmare. Shark nightmare, shark vision. Yep. And he wakes up and the Santa Claus henchman is in the room and he acts completely natural. The priest oh, is yeah. like, hey, uh, Santa Claus henchman, you just watching me sleep. He's weirdly unafraid of him. He's like, what's up, dude? Yeah. <laughs> hey, are you uh, breathing super hard the way Eli does every time he has to wear a mask in public? No. <laughs> I'm very scary. <laughs> you know, you have two sets of stairs leading up to your apartment. <laughs> Do you have any water I could drink through this mask? <laughs> so and so he calls it the visitation, right? Yeah. Like he, I'm the visitation or something like that. Does he talk? I don't remember. But somehow we know that he is a visitation, whatever that means. He is a visitation and he's there to tell the priest to stay away from Buster Pretorius. He explains that we are Z, his, his like cult of Santa Claus dressed people, and they protect the cursed Noah's Ark. That's their thing. Heath, you have so much understanding of the plot. Yes. Of like what? <laughs> I'm so, pr you know, so often when we do these things, Heath is just like, oh, what's this? What's that? And you're on it this week, man. <laughs> you're on. I don't know which one of us went on vacation because you're on the top of your game, Heath. I loved this movie, if I'm being honest. I really, <laughs> just, I really loved this movie. Yeah. So we learn that the Ark is cursed because of Noah's son, whose name is lost to history. We learned before his name was Zadkiel. And the priest is like, yeah, no, I know about Zadkiel too, obvi. And <laughs> then we get a little more of the story from the henchman guy. He's like, yeah, so Zadkiel impregnated a harlot and left her to die in the flood, but a demon named Abraxas put her on a mountain. She gave birth right after the flood was over. We hide his grave from the world. That's, yeah. Our purpose. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, hang on. There's a lot to unpack here. So the harlot who was left to die in the flood, but hooked it up with demon Abraxas on the mountain and gave birth, gave birth who to- Who sounds who? like a heroic demon. Yep. Did she? Yeah, I know. He sounds like a good guy. Did she give birth to Zadkiel? Who, what is the point of that plot? Great question. The <laughs> answer is no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How that connects to the movie is something I spent a tremendous amount of my notes and life worrying about. Did you figure it out? No. Okay. So I think the point of this, this is all I got from it, was just casual sexism. <laughs> because <laughs> That's most of he it. refers to this woman as a harlot. And earlier, when he's talking about all this lore, he literally says... And then there was sin, and they just show a picture of the woman. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, Sin, like, you know, Sin ladies. It's just a Lady, woman. Lady yeah. Sin. Yeah. yeah. Like the only female characters up to this point in the in the in the movie are harlots, witches, and sin. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> right. I think that's that's the whole point. Everybody else is a man, man. Yeah. Yeah. So they're hiding this like fact of reality. And the priest kind of latches onto that. He's like, wait, so your cult is doing that? You're you're helping lie to the world about God's real plan. And then the guy from the cult explains, no, 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 no. Well, it's it, Satan's plan is behind the whole thing. We're kind of hiding Satan's plan. <laughs> and and then for no reason, we just see a vision of a shark jumping, <laughs> the demon shark, as what? though the movie was like, oh, oh, guys, we named it shark. We got to put in yeah. some shark. <laughs> I wanted, <laughs> I wanted the priest to stop and be like, hey, did you just say shark jump out of nowhere in your story? Splash, shark, splash. You, you, oh, you're saying splash. Okay. Okay. Painting a picture for you. And then out of nowhere, Buster Pretorius shows up and <laughs> smashes the cult guy on the head with a frying pan. <laughs> You know, cartoon style. Where did he get a fucking frying pan? Great question. From the hotel kitchen, clearly. (laughs) Yes, from the hotel kitchen. We are led to believe that the priest borrowed a frying pan (laughs) from the hotel kitchen to make bacon. Oh, because he references that. He's like, did you make bacon in here? Yeah, he sniffs it. Man, I could smash some bacon (laughs) right now. Yes. (laughs) What? (laughs) Yep, exact words. And I was like, yeah, same, actually. I can smash some bacon right now, too. You can also smash some bacon. I had a little bit of bacon in real life at this moment. And then they're like, okay, well, we uh, knocked out the cult guy. Let's pull off the mask and see who he is. <laughs> oh, my God, I love this part. <laughs> they try to pull off the mask. And they're like, it doesn't come off. I think that's his real face. Clearly, it's a plastic. It's like earlier when we were describing the mask, we weren't even as clear as we needed to be because it's not like a hockey mask. It's like one of those flimsy plastic Halloween masks that costs like two ninety nine. dollars Yeah. So he's he's wearing a plastic mask on his face. You can see the string. You can see his face underneath the mask. And he's like, I can't get it. Yeah. This must be his face. Yeah, okay. The nice version of this costs two ninety nine. <laughs> this is from a Dollar General <laughs> and was maximum ninety nine cents or a dollar. Now this was turned down at a buyer's meeting yeah. for the Dollar General, <laughs> right? And we can see again. We can see the rubber band that goes around yeah. the side of this. So again, the movie is saying that a rubber band is holding this guy's face onto his face. <laughs> and there's more face under the face. And there's a lot of face under the face. Yeah. So they're like, all right, we got to get rid of the body. And then they carry the Santa henchman to their <laughs> shitty car and throw him in the trunk. Oh, yeah. What is the point of that scene? Because that we never come back to that, do we? Well, they <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> we don't ever go back to this hotel or anything. They drive out into the woods to, I guess, dispose of the body. Yeah. Yep. And they start talking in the car. And Buster Pretorius is like, hey, man. That guy tried to kill you, so we're dumping the body. You're okay with this, right? And the priest is like, wait, did he try to kill me? And (laughs) Buster's like, yeah. This is the machete that he had. You didn't. Oh, yeah. He's like, he he had a machete. He dropped it. And like the the movie characters argue with each other about the plot for like a minute, (laughs) about what happened in the movie for a second. Really weird. So, so insane. So it's decided that, yes, what we saw in the movie did happen. They both finally <laughs> agree. And they, uh, they they park and they go back to the trunk. And <laughs> I guess they're going to dump them in the woods. But enormous Santa Henchman jumps out <laughs> at impossible speed and runs away. And can I just say, look, I'm a bigger guy. I'm a bigger person. <laughs> and there are lots of things that you lose when you reach a certain size, right? <laughs> Putting on <laughs> shoes without strain. And and one of the things that you lose is the ability to pop scare. Because <laughs> he very clearly is like, Bruh! and then he runs away, but he's like, <laughs> he stops way too early and very clearly looks back at the camera like, is that enough? For- oh, shit, they're still like, ah, 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 ah. come on, you guys aren't done filming yet. Ah, ah. <laughs> you just cut whatever you want. And meanwhile, the priest in his like pork pie hat 
is like has taken like 10 Xanax because he's just standing there like that was weird. Yeah. Like he has no reaction no. to the guy who just tried to kill him with a giant machete jumping out of the trunk and running away. He's like, huh, all right, just close the trunk, get back in. <laughs> It's very strange. I guess that problem solves itself. I guess we go to Mount Ararat now. Yeah. Normal day. Yeah, like what what was that scene? Great question. <laughs> no idea. Well, it's not quite over though, because they're like, all right, that was weird. Whatever. Let's go. We're gonna go to Mount Ararat. But then the Santa guy came back, I guess. Oh yeah. He, he ran There's away. There's nowhere. Here's the thing. There's nowhere for him to go. He doesn't disappear. He just runs a couple feet away in the snow. They get in the car and he's like, I'm I'm still here, you guys. <laughs> and <laughs> he's, he tries he tries a curse here, like a magic curse. He's like, all right, I'm going to curse you then. And then he has, <laughs> he has to cut his arm to like put blood on the car as part of a curse. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah, what was that? It takes him way too long. And they're like, all right, we're running this guy over. So they run him over. But the editing is amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's just not there. But I don't, I think. I think he can phase through stuff like cars. Is that unclear? The physics here? I couldn't tell if it was that he can phase through cars or the editing was bad. No, it's just bad editing. Basically, you've got this big, huge guy standing in front of the car, and then they want us to think they ran him over. So they just cut to the car running nothing over. Just just driving. Right, with the sound effect of a guy going like, thump, 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 human <laughs> being hit by a car. <laughs> thump, thump. Okay, well, they didn't kill the cult guy, but they left that scene. And now we cut back to, I think, Buster's house. And they're figuring out how the Santa cult fits into their plan. Yeah, yeah. wait, why are they going back to somebody's house at this point? They've Well, they thought they murdered a guy. Why was the priest in a hotel and not at his own house if we're just back in town? Great questions. I think Great he's questions. not welcome at his house because his spouse was like, you're the worst. So he, <laughs> he's just at a hotel. I saw how you were talking to that girl from Hot Topic. You stay yeah. gone for the weekend. <laughs> but I'm sort of loving Buster in this scene because he doesn't give a fuck. Like he's basically just hanging and the priest is like, okay, we got to talk about this. And Buster says, I need no Bible lessons. And I'm like, I too need no Bible lessons. Buster. <laughs> I'm with you on this. Okay. And this is when the two of them, for the very first time, kind of asked the question, okay, what if the cult is more than one person? Are there one person cults? Did they think <laughs> it might be one until now? I think that's just called a psychotic break if you're, if <laughs> right. you're a one man cult. <laughs> I, okay, whatever. They maybe kind of assumed it was a one person cult, but then they were like, wait, this might hinder our progress in Turkey. Buster is like, don't worry about it. I know a guy. So a murder guy is what he's describing, right? Yeah. He knows an arms dealer. Right. Well, yeah, actually, we cut to him being like, okay, here's the guy I was talking about. They're at a shooting range where oh. his friend is an arms dealer slash former military person, but kind of like a, a mercenary with like black water. Is yeah. That, that type of thing. They're trying mm -hmm. to say. Okay. So she by the way. Yeah, Gina. Gina. Known as Jed, but Gina, yeah. Um, like the worst, probably the worst actress I've ever seen on God Awful Movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because she has this weird way that she holds her mouth where it looks like she's trying not to laugh in every mm -hmm. scene. Like she's, she has this permanent <laughs> smile on her face and she's wearing these enormous sunglasses like yep. these aviators, I think to try and hide the fact that she's trying not to laugh. And she wears them at night. <laughs> she wears them indoors. She wears them while she's shooting guns. And she's horrible. Yeah. yeah. Buster walks in. He's like, hey, what's up? You're back from Afghanistan. Cool. Ah, uh, I heard the, the, the war crimes didn't go well. That didn't work out for you. So to be clear, they're now getting help from a war criminal. Yep. Sure. Yeah. And the priest is like, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. My uh, my whole Catholic church, we did a lot of work, criminal stuff. You know? I was going to say, in Buster's eyes, his dream team now con consists of a child molester and a war criminal. Yeah, of course. <laughs> also, I want to talk about what Jed. Is it Jed? J I think yeah, her, Jed her name is Gina. Jed. Yeah, because yeah, they will. I think this was supposed to be two characters at one point in the script <laughs> because... <laughs> That actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> well, at one point, they will refer to her with male pronouns. At another point, she's an ex-girlfriend. 
And at yet another point, she will try to have sex with him. Oh, yeah. That's a weird scene. Oh, this is the assistant manager from Hot Topic who also quit. And they were yeah. like, fuck, Jed is Gina now. We'll, we'll <laughs> write it together. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever. They get the war criminal on board. She's going to be their military person helper. And they head to Mount Ararat. Yeah, cut to. Now they're in Mount Ararat. So Ararat. we literally cut to. <laughs> like, literally Ararat. nothing in between. Nope. And um, because that's in the country of Turkey, or Turkey, it's an active war zone. So there's just, <laughs> there's just gunfire everywhere as they walk up, quote, Mount Ararat. Well, when we say gunfire, it's the sound effects of a toy gun from 1992. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was it's the sound say. of a kid doing the sound effects of his <laughs> toy gun in 1992. <laughs> me, Heath, doing that. Yes. Yeah. And she has this permanent smile. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. Like she's trying so hard not to laugh in every scene she's in. And it makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> Have you ever seen someone who gets onto the news to talk about a fire they saw? <laughs> That's her acting. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know it's over there. Yeah. Like, she- <laughs> She's like so bashful. Like at one point she's like hiding behind the shoulder of Pretorius, like reading her lines behind his shoulder. It's so hard to watch. It's rough. So they're going up the mountain. We watch her shoot a snake with her Uzi. (laughs) Yeah. Which seems excessive. But that's the only gun they had as a prop. So that's what happens. And we watch them eat a snake. And (laughs) just in case it wasn't boring enough, Pretorius is like, we should all take like a nap now. Let's take a break. <laughs> yes. That did happen. That happened. From our movie. <laughs> the heroes take a nap from the movie. <laughs> they might as well say, gee, this movie has been tiring. <laughs> that does happen. <laughs> God. Like, I feel like they actually wrote more of the movie now. Like one of them was like, I'm going to stay awake and write the movie. And the rest of them took a real nap <laughs> because that's all that happens. <laughs> so they all take a nap. That yep. They literally take a nap. I wrote, we take watch a nap. them take nap a nap. time is always my favorite part of a movie. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and the then, nap scene. Then, so they nap. And then Jed, Gina, who got written together to one. That's absolutely what happened to Eli, for sure. <laughs> Has to be. Yep. She wakes up Buster Pretorius because apparently they used to have a thing going on. And she's like, let's go fuck behind this tree. I want to rekindle this. It's very odd. I th- I thought this was very queer affirming because up until this point, they had only used he, him pronouns for her. So I was like, good for you, movie. Get progressive. No, that was just a straight up no, mistake. No, yeah. they, they switched her over to a Yeah. Lady. And so she's the one who sort of comes on to him, right? Mm-hmm. And she's like, don't you want to do this? And he's like, well, yeah, but spike pit. And like points to a spike pit under the tree. What? What is happening? Okay, Kara. See, this is a typical woman. Typical woman. Oh, the minute you want to do it, we just have to ignore the fact that we're standing next to an aforementioned, unmentioned spike pit. (laughs) To be fair, though, he's like, oh, you want to fucking a spike pit? Like, yeah, that's interesting. And then she's like, no, no, you've you've ruined it now. I don't want to fuck in the spike pit. Yeah. So they cut. And that's the end of the scene. That's the end of the scene. They're just making up the script as they go along at this point. Just, it's like a scavenger hunt. They're like, just work with what's in the environment, guys. We'll pick it up. I was furious at this moment. <laughs> the movie set up a spike pit sex scene between a televangelist and a literal war criminal. <laughs> and then they fucking canceled it. They just yes. pump fake that. So, yeah. Uh, We're going to need to take a quick break to check some tabs on Pornhub VR because I think they probably have something like that. But first, (laughs) let me give Act 3 the hard... Are there acts in this? Arbitrary. Arbitrary. The rest of the movie, here's the hard sell. (laughs) It works. Will three people from America find a 510-foot boat that's somehow eluded Turkish authorities (laughs) for millennia? (laughs) Will we get more wood-based magic? Will the movie run out of plot and just literally recycle itself to hit that 71-minute sweet spot? Yes. Find out the answer to these questions and more. It's yes to all those. (laughs) When we return for the ibidful conclusion of Noah's Shark. Oh, no, Michael, I feel another prophecy coming on. Oh, what is it, Sarah? (gasps) 
The Dark One rises. Only the two stags may stand in his path. Wow, that sounds serious. Sorry, what does that mean? I don't know. The spirits speak through me. Right. Yeah, no, but like, do they have to speak in a weird riddle thing to speak through you? I don't know. Dude, you're kind of ruining this. How am I ruining this? The spirits entered a human body to deliver a message of universal importance and they have to talk like a Twilight fanfic? Just ask them again to talk normal. I can't just ask them again. Seriously, you can't? Uh, Again, yes. Just spirits, universal importance. Just ask at least. Fine, fine. Kill Jerry on Friday the 11th at noon. See, that I understood. Yeah, okay. I mean, it feels a little anticlimactic now. Yeah, thank you. You just want to go kill Jerry? Yeah, I mean, let's go kill Jerry. I mean, I guess so. Yeah, we'll definitely kill Jerry. What we got to do? Dude, it's going to break. Do we have another belt? Hey, guys, what you doing? Oh, hey, Kara. We were just pushing down our feelings. Yeah, but it is getting hard, let me tell you. I bet. Why don't you guys try therapy? Oh, Kara, this is like work stress and world stuff. You don't talk to a therapy about that kind of thing, do you? Yes, you do. Therapists are there to help you deal with the stress and pressures of everyday life, not just mental illness. And an easy way to do that is with BetterHelp. Oh, what's BetterHelp? BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's affordable, financial aid is available, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Plus, god-awful movies listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash awful. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. All right, Kara, thanks. But hey, while I'm here, do you have room in that case for Roe v. Wade? Nah, no. Mm-hmm. Lucinda's got a warehouse, though. She's doing very reasonable rates. Yeah, I'm going to look into that. Big. And we're back. And so is the movie. When we <laughs> left off, they had just pump faked the only interesting idea they ever had in the entire fucking script. And instead, <laughs> they're back again, still more at that same little fire where they took a nap most recently. They were so proud of building this fire in the middle of this national park. It's so tiny. Because it's the only real, it's the only non-CGI fire in the thing. Yeah. True. <laughs> right. So Buster shows back up and he's got one of the sticks from the spike pit, clearly still trying to like play for some spike pit fucking or whatever. <laughs> and Gina, Jed is like, hey man, that stick's got pee on it for sure. You're touching pee. That's what Okay, this is so weird. The she Viet goes, Cong would do that in Vietnam. <laughs> yeah, the, well, so she, goes, she literally said, well, back in Nam, she's yeah. 32 years old. <laughs> Tops. Yeah, and the movie calls her out on that. He goes, you were in a Nam, and she's like, yeah, but I read about it in a book. <laughs> Why am I in the it's movie? lost book of Nam that got erased because they were cur- No, nah, No, that's a different thing. Yeah. By the way, also, I noticed right here, I was very excited. The priest has Eli's exact shoes. And this is no! every so often, in, like, weirdly a lot, like, I'm going to say a dozen times over the last couple of years, somebody has Eli's exact shoes in the movie. Look, he does. Oh, there was one movie where they had the same shirt. Remember? It was the musical. Yeah, they did have my shirt. Wow. I think, to be fair, I had their shirt <laughs> for that <laughs> Christian musical. <laughs> you look, sometimes... You want to go to pay less and you really do want to pay less. <laughs> and that's when you end up <laughs> with my... When you go to pay less and fucking mean it, that's when you end up with my shoes. Wait, is pay less still a store? <laughs> no, but if you buy four <laughs> pairs at once... Oh, God. Which is what I do. <laughs> they last <laughs> far beyond the business. <laughs> you own untouched pay less shoes from before <laughs> two, they went out of business? Two... Mwah, fresh pairs oh my of shoes. God. Just licking the soul. Yep. Love it. Okay. You could eat off my shoes. <laughs> Do they have that smell, that Payless shoe store smell? <laughs> yeah. Because you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah it's called urine, Kara. <laughs> it's called asparagus urine. Yes. <laughs> God. Okay, so the movie, well, you have to talk about the movie. They're still in vamp mode. They're still writing the rest of the movie and they haven't come up with anything. Yeah. So at this point, we actually watch Buster. Jed is like, come on, go get not a pee stick. Go get other sticks for the fire that aren't with pee on them. So we watch him go out and gather sticks 
and literally talked to himself about how <laughs> boring it is to gather sticks. Yeah, he's like, I can't Stupid believe I'm in the woods movie, picking up only sticks. Only 60 minutes yeah. long. Already had to <laughs> fill it with napping and picking up sticks. <laughs> but then something actually happens. He sees a Z cult mask on a tree right next to him. No. To be clear, he sees the dude's real and definitely not plastic mask face <laughs> hanging on the tree. That is not a mask. It is his face, yes. even though they'd call it a mask for oh, the rest of the movie. That's meant to be a chopped off head? I mean, earlier it was his face. In, they, uh, they actually talk about that because he brings it back. No, you're right. And he's like, oh, this is crazy because earlier we couldn't take it off because it was his face. <laughs> but now it's a mask. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> this movie is bad. I would like to leave. <laughs> Whatever. You're Jed and Gina now. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> None of this makes sense. Fuck yourself in the spike pit. <laughs> oh, right. And she's like, what the hell is that? And they're like, oh, we're being chased by a murder cult. Oh, it's from earlier in the movie. It makes slightly less sense than your existence in the film. <laughs> <laughs> right. So they realize now that maybe that cult had more than one person and is maybe following them and trying to kill them in Turkey. Mm -hmm. I, I guess the cult has to give you like multiple warnings before they actually kill you. They have to do a visitation and kind of be nice about it. Let you yeah. hit him with a frying pan. The, the, the cult <laughs> follows gentle parenting rules. Like It looks like you're feeling big emotions about wanting to find the Ark right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. So from there, we get another vision of the witch with the apples who runs the Ark Museum on Mount Ararat. And they've given us a slightly longer version of the shot this time, which includes the girl lying with the apples getting bored and thinking the shot is over, which I really appreciated. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cause she's like, sexy apples, apples, apples. Are we done? <laughs> oh no, and apples, apples, <laughs> apples, apples. Right? So we get that vision again. And then we see Z cult guy on the arc. This is the guy in the red robe with the cross and the mask. Yeah. Right. So he's presumably meeting with the witch because they're all on the same team. And isn't there now the lake shark comes back because because we're sure like, oh, yeah, this is a movie about Noah's shark. Yeah. We see the lake and then the shark again so that we're all <laughs> on the same page that the shark is inside this three inch puddle. <laughs> There might as well be a title card that comes up that's like, I assure you there is a shark in this puddle. Okay, whose vision is this that we're seeing right now? I don't know. The movies? The mo <laughs> we are seeing the movie's vision. It, doesn't, it literally doesn't matter. From here, we go back to the exact same shitty little fire again some more. And they talk about how they should get some sleep. Not a nap this time, a full sleep. Were you guys worried that we were going to watch them do a full eight hours sleep? I was <laughs> certain that we would get some sleeping. Jed, Gina says, we should get some sleep. It looks like we're going to reach the Ark tomorrow. How the, what, what looks like that? What looks like <laughs> something that's going to happen tomorrow? What does that mean? I checked out that little bar at the bottom of the screen here on Amazon Prime. <laughs> and it looks like we're almost done with the movie. So uh, everybody rest up. I was pretty confused at this point because I, I did pause this movie many times to do things like get food or pee or not have to watch the movie. And I noticed that we were quite close to the end at this point. And I was like, hmm, how are they going to wrap this up? They aren't. Or how are they going to include a fucking shark? They aren't. <laughs> this movie's called Noah's Shark. And my notes, the, the predominant note throughout this entire movie is... Okay, you've got six minutes left for fucking anything with a shark to happen. Shark, please now. Shark now. Shark, please now. Nope, they do not. They just wake up the next day and <laughs> they still haven't come up with anything because the camera guy, he's like, I'm going to go get some B-roll B-roll footage of the woods. And, and of Pretorius urinating? Yes. Yeah. He literally shoots Pretorius from behind, peeing. He does. <laughs> he does. And then they talk about how they're in a really bad TV show, but really meta commentary that like, <laughs> we're in bad movie. He we? yells at him for the movie being boring. He's like, hey, man, that thing with the mask doesn't make any sense. 
also, where the fuck is the shark? And he's like, just tr- just keep talking and the movie will reach 60 minutes and we'll get yeah. the full $100 from Amazon Prime. <laughs> yeah. Alan, who is the camera operator, that's his name, Alan. I know that because I watch with closed captioning and it told me Good his job. name is Alan. Alan is the skeptic in the group. He just, he doesn't buy it. Oh. It's like, I don't know what's going on. He's the voice of reason. He's okay. the voice of reason. Yeah. Interesting. He's like, you put that mask in the tree. <laughs> you did that. And it wasn't a face. It was a mask. Do you remember any of this? <laughs> no. <laughs> cut. Because the, it got way too meta. They have to cut here. Uh-huh. And then we get more flashes of Witch with the Apples. <laughs> yep. More flashes of Grandpa doing exactly what we already saw him do. We're just getting the exact same shots of the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. More now. That it's it's like a, a kid who was supposed to write a 10-page essay and started <laughs> quoting himself for the last three pages because he didn't have anything. Yep. There's this fucking great moment. They come on this tiny pile of rocks and he's like, yeah, this. remember when he stacks the stones in the Bible? That This tiny pile of rocks is what he was talking about. <laughs> and he's like, seriously? He's like, yeah, seriously. And again... I'm sorry. It's just the weirdest change of tone moment. The priest is explaining like, these were the rocks that Iran brought to Ara. And then the priest walks over and goes, that's what he said, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Pretorius. I cannot tell you how much I want this priest character in every fucking biblical fiction movie, right? Just Tom Hanks looking at an old screwdriver or whatever. And he's just like... <gasps> Boy, oy, oy. good job, Tommy boy. <laughs> He's the best. <laughs> Does a bad break dance move, kind of hurts himself and just leaves. And th- that scene is over. Yep. They keep walking past the tiny little <laughs> pile of rocks that they glued together. And they find a two by four from Home Depot <laughs> balanced on the crotch of a tree. And the priest goes over to it and he's like, yeah, this is gopher wood from the ark. I can feel it. Now, Keith, Keith. It's Heath. (laughs) Did they bother to buy a second piece of wood? Or is this exactly the same piece of wood from earlier in the film? (laughs) This this is the piece of wood that Ben Shapiro bought for spite from Home Depot. For sure. (sighs) It's just an old board. And somebody says that. Buster's like, it's just an old board, man. At one point, he gives what he's like, you could put a a thing on that board. Oh, yeah, that was so weird. He was like, put it on some cinder blocks. You got yourself a table. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what Is this about? in the movie? This can't be in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Says Home Depot on a little sticker. <laughs> but the priest is like, well, they don't fall off the tree planed like this. So the priest is saying it fell off the ark and landed in the tree and now there's like a trail of wood like like E.T. with Reese's Pieces leading up to where the Ark eventually crash landed. Mm-hmm. Yes, but it's not yep. just wood. It's evil wood. <laughs> evil and he knows because he puts wood. his hand, he like sticks his fingers all in its little rivets and things and he's like, ooh, I feel the devil in me. <laughs> he shockers the wood again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. And he gets the flash of Oh, a witch again for a second because he he kind of touched the wood. Mm-hmm. And then they they take a few more steps, like two, <laughs> like, like maybe two, three steps, five <laughs> feet. And now they see a giant 510 foot arc that was not visible to them until this moment. And they don't see it at the same time. Like the first person sees it. The other person stumbles up next to them. Then they look up. The third person stumbles up. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, what are you looking at? Oh, the big giant boat. Yeah, big giant like, boat. Like they're all just w- looking at their feet the whole time they're walking. They rub their eyes and they're like, <laughs> oh, that, that. Okay. Okay. But here's the thing. The priest goes up to the boat. He rubs it. Again, a lot of fingering. Rubs the boat and he says, hello, old girl. We literally all wrote that down. Exact We're all like, words. gross. <laughs> what is happening? Did he used to race the Ark against Vin Diesel? Because that's the only explanation <laughs> for that line. Ugh. Ugh. It made me so uncomfortable. Family. And then we get, I almost went with best best for this. We get the bitches better come near my lake shot from the shark. <laughs> so as is the problem with all shark movies, right? You got to go near the water. 
So now we get a shot of the little pond and the shark in there being like, hope those assholes come near this pond. <laughs> oh, I bet. Well, I hope they do. So I'll, give, I'll fucking bite the shit out of them if they do. <laughs> better. Yep. And we get some more of the exact same shots of everything we already saw in the movie again. A bunch, including the exact same <laughs> bath toy shark. In like oh, Windex blue water <laughs> jumping yeah. and splashing. It like it like does the thing that whales do. Like it, what is that? Like breaching? Like it completely yeah. leaves the water and comes back. And they just keep reversing the shot. Like well, now yeah, it's going left. <laughs> now it's going right. The yeah. Remember when we did the bear growl backwards? It's like that, right? <laughs> That's perfect. So now the priest out of nowhere just wakes up inside the ark like the grandpa did and like the cult guy did. Maybe in a vision or maybe for real. Yeah, This I'm not sure about. Is this what's happening or is he having a vision? No. I think he's having a vision. He's having a vision, but we don't know that yet. Yeah. They skipped the part where he lost consciousness. <laughs> they just cut to him being in the ark. They did. They forgot for him. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, oh, oh, this is where he does the green screen water shot, water. right? <laughs> so they, so they green screen the priest. Because he's spo- in his vision, he's supposed to like be underwater with the shark. So he's just against a green screen and there's like bubbles and he's like. <laughs> and they make him kind of translucent. It's the greatest thing that we've ever seen. It's pretty fucking great. <laughs> it's amazing. They like make him wiggly. Like he's wiggly under the water. It's amazing. <laughs> okay. So he gets attacked by the shark while he's in the underwater area green screen thing, right? Right. Yeah. But then. No, we find out he's fine. That was a vision. He's back on the ark again, but there's like a, a little <laughs> splash of water. So he he was in a vision within a vision? No, he's he wakes up outside the ark, right? No. Well, he wakes he, up on planks of the no, ark. No, he oh. is he is in a vision within a vision. <laughs> he is. Then Thank he wakes you. up from the vision. The, the second <laughs> level vision he wakes up from. Yeah. So he doodly doos out of the second doodly doo. He's now back in the first doodly doo. Correct. Oh, so wait, is this the part yet where Pretorius is like, I ain't going to stroke your forehead, but I'm here for you. No, that's when he's totally out of the vision, Kara. (laughs) We're still in vision level one. (laughs) You jump from two entirely out of the vision, but you're forgetting that it gets stabbed in the tummy by cross pajama suit guy. Exactly. Eli might as well walk into the frame and be like, you can't swoosh out of a doodly do. That's fucking <laughs> exactly. stupid, idiots. They're li- they literally try to beep out of a doodly do. This is why I'm no. confused. Beep a this is why I have yeah. no idea what's going on. It's like computer programming language. You have to have end brackets that match. It, <laughs> it has to line up. Idiots. Exactly. <laughs> Inside out little girl is there. <laughs> Carl Pug, Peg Gorn. Yeah. So that was all a vision a double vision and now a single and now back to, now we're back to real, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Pretorius is being a dick. So he was just standing there the whole time, like having a seizure, miming his first vision <laughs> yeah. and then his vision within a vision. And they were watching. Mm-hmm. I think so. Or maybe he was unconscious, but either way he wakes up and he's like, Ugh. he wakes up and he seems to have like a stab wound from within one of those doodly doos. Right. The first one. Yeah. And do you guys remember the context of this? But at one point, Pretorius, maybe he's talking to the woman and he goes, normally I'd find blasphemy hot, but in this case, and I was like, me too, dude, me too. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I'm kind of on the same wavelength as this guy. Yeah, Pretorius and us are are feeling the same way about this movie for a lot of this yeah, movie. So yeah. you want to get out of here, find that spike pit or... But yeah, I, I don't want to lose the thread of this very important plot. So... Oh, oh, sure. While he was in the first level of the vision, he got stabbed by mask karate suit wearing guy, mm-hmm. right? And when he wakes up, that means that he's thirsty, what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so he's like, I'm so thirsty. Quick, go over to that shallow pond that Toast doesn't have a shark in it and get me some water. Oh, that's why the, yes. they were just doing that to get somebody near. Did he learn nothing from his vision? Like he had a vision of a shark in that same pond ripping his face off. And then he's like, go, go to the pond. Yep. I'd know nothing of a shark being in there. Yep. So they walk over to the pond to get him a drink. <laughs> Of pond water. <laughs> and Ew. Buster and Jed Gina talk about some uh, theology here. They're, they both have their moment of like, so I don't know. This is a lot of detail stuff that kind of all worked out. The, 
the book of the witch of Endor was kind of right about this. I feel like we're Christian now, right? And <laughs> right that's as, what happened. Okay. Right as that happens. There's the moral. <laughs> Buster's like, I think we are Christian. I just want to add one more thing. I think I love, before you finish oh. saying I love you, the show fucking jumps out of the pond and eats him. They deep blue see it. They deep, they deep blue, blue see, see it. it. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then she shoots at it with a machine gun, but it's a demon shark, so it doesn't work and it eats her. Yep. And does Buster die too? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, Buster and Jed Gina get killed by the shark here. And all that's left now is Priest, who's kind of just laying there from his doodly do level one stab wound thirst. <laughs> and then camera guy comes over and he's like, what the fuck is happening? Am I still in this? What do I have to do? And Priest is like, they're dead. They're all dead. Here's what you got to do. You have the footage to prove this to the world that Christianity is a thing. Go, go. I'm going to die. You go. And he's like, take the E99. Yes. He, he names one the- highway in Turkey. He like gives him detailed GPS instructions. Take Route 47. Is that a toll road or is that? It's a, do you have easy pass? <laughs> I um, Okay. Because it's only a dollar twenty if you can do cash. You're telling me the route through Turkey is one road? Yep. It's just the one? It's the one. It, it goes from road. Turkey to where? Name somewhere that it goes. Mashed potatoes. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> it snakes the turkey. <laughs> so, camera guy leaves, and then the witch of Endor shows up to like tell the priest what hap- what the plot was of all this. Yeah, she's reading him her poetry and oh. reading a little bit of poetry. Sure, they have this great exchange. She grabs him and she and he says. I would die to defeat you. And she says, I would not die to defeat you. (laughs) And he's like, oh, okay. Well, I kind of thought we had a nemesis thing going, but I see that I'm not not as big a part of your life as I hoped. (laughs) But now that you're incapacitated, I will be reading you some of my slam poetry. Yeah. (laughs) But I think what happens here is she tells him, no, no, it's we're all demons, like all of us, the cult. The shark, me, me who looks like Little Red Riding Hood. We're all demons, Legion. Right, because they all show their faces and they're like, we are Legion. I am Legion. And the shark's like, Legion. Yeah, right. (laughs) I am Spartacus shark. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. right. (laughs) And I think also grandpa was Legion too, right? The the lumberjack grandpa? Yeah, this Mm -hmm. one, I have no idea what's going on. Oh yeah, because this is where they're, they're, okay. I actually get this point of the plot. They're showing their cards to say, all of this was a big sophisticated ruse to get you here, to get some proof and put it out into the world. But the the demons are helping them get proof that Noah's Ark story and the Old Testament was real? Right, because, yes. because they're actually more aware of the irony than they're letting on. Because if you want to believe in all this bullshit, you have to believe in the bad side of the bullshit too. So in in like... Holy shit, this actually makes sense. I think Yeah, right. like in proving to the world that they are <laughs> demons, of course it also proves the Noah shit, but whatever, it doesn't matter. The whole point is that the good guys wanted to keep this a secret and they want the world to know about it. Right, and that lines up with what the cult guy said earlier. Yeah. Oh, shit. You tied it together correctly. <laughs> Guys, is is this a great movie? It's a great movie. Thank you, Eli. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it's such a great movie. I see a line that you wrote, Heath, that says, he hears a pterodactyl. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently that's a thing that happens in this movie, too. That is what happens. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, and that's the line of the coin has two sides. So, like, the camera guy... He's filming as he's trying to find the E99. It's like the (laughs) Blair Witch Project at this point. Yeah. Prayer Witch. He's literally saying, I don't want to be in a found footage movie. I don't want to be in a found footage. (laughs) I'm not making that that up, by the way. That's not a joke Eli wrote. That's something the character says in the found footage movie. (laughs) Yes. Yes. But the idea here is he doesn't want to die and somebody else find his tape later. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh right! Okay. Yeah, that's what he means, right? Like I don't, I, I want to get out of here alive. I don't want this to just be an after the fact thing. Oh, uh, okay. So that's why he's like, I'm going to destroy the camera. Well, not yet. Oh no, no. This is when priest guy catches up with him. Yeah, and he's like, basically, like, whoa, whoa. If we actually bring this footage back, we are in on their plan. 
we can't do this. We have to pretend we were never here. Oh, I thought. Otherwise, we are Legion too. Yes. I thought Priest was a demon at this point. I thought, no, no. <laughs> no, no, Priest just, just realizes. I thought he got demoned up by the witch. No, no, he realizes that if he continues with his plan to expose them, he's actually doing what they wanted him to do all along because they were all Legion. Exactly. Holy shit, this is really good writing. And so they, <laughs> they leave the camera and they walk off to go find E99. But just when you think the movie's over, the witch picks up the camera. Yeah, like what was that purpose of that? <laughs> just really wanted the rest of the movie to be her home <laughs> movies. Just like, and this is my witch's hut. <laughs> this is the kitchen. It's a little messy right now. Don't judge me. I'm the witch of Endor. I'll kill your children. <laughs> and then you know the movie's over because they unscroll the PowerPoint intro and it says that no IDVD outro. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> okay. That's the end of the movie. So, what's the moral of the? Was there a moral of the story? Um, <laughs> never trust a woman covered in apples. Sure. <laughs> Women equals sin. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And apples. Yeah. It all ties together. <laughs> so I think that is going to do it for Noah's shark, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we found another terrible movie for next week. Eli, what's on deck? On the night that he's released from prison, Lucas Blackstone sets out for the town of Trinity to find the man who murdered his son. Subtle. Blackstone, Blackstone. town of Trinity. <laughs> Armed with a pistol and a past full of mistakes, Lucas kidnaps Sean Everett and his wife Carrie and holds them hostage. As the trio travels to Trinity, Lucas learns of Sean and Carrie's troubled marriage and questions their ability to, <laughs> to reconcile their love <laughs> through their faith in God. But Lucas has no interest in their faith. That is until he uncovers the horrible truth about his son's killer. We'll be watching Taken by Grace. Oh, oh my man. God, I'm so glad I'm not doing that movie. <laughs> We're going to go way downhill in terms of writing next week. <laughs> All right, well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 358 to a merciful close. Big thanks to Kara for joining us. Kara, you got anything to announce? Anything big coming up? Nope. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Going to be on Gam again soon, probably, right? That's right. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe one day. <laughs> and, Kara, you can't quit on the air, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you heard it right here, folks. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> and, of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. And that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. Also, check out Dear Old Dads. Ooh, ooh. And if you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided at the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Eagle Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Kara Santa Maria and Eli Bosnick, I'm Heath Enright, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House close. The shark went on to reimagine every book of the Bible. <laughs> so stay tuned. <laughs> it's going to be a long season here on God Awful Movies. Real long season. Father Ben of the Priest got reported by Amy and her mom, but nothing fucking happened. Yep, that tracks. The Witch of Endor used her new camera to start a very profitable many vids page. That's the one I want to see. I want to yeah. see that. Yeah. Do I have some bookmarks for you, Kara? Oh, no. <laughs>skin books that's weird too <laughs> no i'm still i'm all about skin books she is um, into skin books it's not all me what okay so who am i in this one am i a demon a demon yeah mm -hmm. do i have to have a demon voice not necessarily i'm gonna have a demon voice i'm not gonna it. tell you how to play your part <laughs> okay i'll do it choice it's your, your journey i'm just i'm just gonna go with whatever whatever <laughs> noise i make in the first few seconds i'm gonna stick Roll with, with it. it yep nice yeah. I really wanted to do like a really problematic Asian accent. <laughs> that would be terrible. <laughs> like, um, like what is that movie? Breakfast, Breakfast at Tiffany's. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. To be clear, don't do, don't do Mickey Rooney.
Yeah, but well, like to almost whatever else. race you think demons are. <laughs> <laughs> so Jewish, you're gonna go with Jewish. Oh, Obviously, God. go with Jewish. <laughs> Perfect. Here we go. Demons gather round me. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting more of a demons gather round me. <laughs> Satan can't be Jewish. <laughs> Absolutely. You not. guys are bigots. You guys are bigots. <laughs> Absolutely not. Cut. <laughs> he was. Jew he worked for Jew God first. <laughs> Jesus. Christ. I stand by this choice. He converted. <laughs> That's true. Oh, what's better help? <laughs> you really, you really rock those ellipses. Fuck yeah! <laughs> Get on board, Kara. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> In my head, canon, Kara just noticed that we do that for the first time this week. <laughs> That's how little I we did, I just did. Oh my You God, just that noticed amazing? that. Yeah. It's like two year. It's a two year old bit, Kara. Oh fuck. Okay, I'm sorry. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Kara, what are our names? <laughs> Off the top of the dome. <laughs> there you wow. go. I did it. I did it. I don't know Noah's well name, done. though. Morgan, keep that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. The fuck was that? Is that a pre-roll? Yeah, it's the pre-roll. Oh, why did you do it in that voice? That's Carl that's the Carl Pegapegacorn. Pegapegacorn. It's, Pegapegacorn. it's like a nine-year bit. He's literally our most important character, Kara. <laughs> You've never used him in any episode I've ever been You on. have spent a tremendous amount of time with Carl the Pug of <laughs> He's right there. You let him in. I have no idea what's happening. I wonder if you polled your audience, how many of them would be like, oh, that's a bit? What are you talking about? People <laughs> love Carl. They draw Carl. I have a wall in my house covered with fan art of Carl the Pega Pegacorn. Carl the Pecker Peckercorn? What are you saying? He's saying pug a pegacorn. It's it's a pug <laughs> and a unicorn and a pegasus at the same time. Yeah, and it's half an Italian American from New York. <laughs> half unicorn. He's uh, mildly racist. Okay, so he I is. was supposed to get not, all of like that Lebanese from that people? Voice? I think he doesn't like Lebanese people. Oh, Jesus. Oh, he definitely doesn't like Lebanese people. I don't think that's the end of the list. <laughs> he likes garlic bread. He does like garlic bread. He has a sister named Edna. But wait, he's Italian. He doesn't like garlic bread? No, no he, he loves does like garlic. garlic bread. Oh, okay. As long as it's not made at a Lebanese <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> exactly. Fuck. Hey, should I stop now? Sure. Yeah. We <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop too. Thank you. The preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and the Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. Heard my little sis is buying a car. You'll need my secret guide. Gross, no way. I already used Capital One Auto Navigator. I bet your credit score... Wasn't impacted at all, so ha. I got my real rate and monthly payment, had an amazing test drive at the dealership, and made the purchase. Taking the easy way out. That's so you. Still not getting it. That's so you. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Terms and conditions apply. Find out more at CapitalOne.com slash Auto Navigator. It's easy to save every day at Whole Foods Market. Shop their 365 by Whole Foods Market line. From juice boxes to jerky, it's the flavors that pop, not the price tags. With thousands of items store-wide, you'll find awesomeness on every aisle. Bring it home without compromising your standards, because it's all made without the 230-plus ingredients Whole Foods Market bans from all food. Feel good about what you put on the table.